All right, so now I have everything out of the way. I've got my speaker grill and carpeting squeezed out of the way. And what I've also done is gotten some of this foam and this is what the foam is attached under. All you have to do, you don't have to rip this foam up. You just have to kind of pull it around. You can see that's where it was at. It, you can stretch it over the top and pull some of this foam out of the way. So of course, now that you're looking at this, you have to take out all the Phillips screws so we can get into the subwoofer area here. And also right down here, there is, this is your subwoofer clip that goes all the way up to the front. I showed you that in the radio install video. Uh, this one right here is just a clip right on the bottom. You pop that out, the clip is right up here. All right, so once you take out all the Phillips screws, you just kind of give this a little squeeze, pop, shenangle thing, and there you go, it's out. And this is what we're working with on the other side as I smack my camera a few times. We've already got some styrofoam up in here and it looks like we don't have anything back there so we might have to close that off. But it is a pretty nice open area that we can put a good sub in here. So after you get everything cleared out, you can start measuring for your speaker frame that you're gonna put in there. There's a bunch of different ways to do it, but the way I'm gonna do it is I got some MDF board at my hardware store. So I, I mean, this was the smallest I could get, so I'm gonna save this for, I guess, another project. But I cut out a corner that was big enough to fit more than what was back there. And slowly I've been cutting it down and remeasuring and measuring, and this is what I came up with. I know it looks kind of weird, but it's enough to fit inside the hole back there so I can put it behind the frame and I can actually drill it in place so it's not gonna move anywhere. If you want the measurements, um, I guess if you want them, I wrote them on here. <laughs> I have by no means any sort of expert on this or carpenter, so across this place I have uh, 13 and then 11 and a quarter from here to here because I did cut off that corner. So I've got 11 and a quarter from that corner to there, 13 inches there. From top to bottom, it's 14, across there, and then over here, it's 10 and a half inches from those two points, and it is seven inches from that point to that point, so you can kind of cut that corner. Now, when I get this in place, this is gonna be the part that faces you. When I get this in place, it's actually not perfectly straight up and down. It's actually tilted. I drew an outline of what it's gonna look like. I've got the pen marks all the way around that, so it's tilted. So once I put it in there, I have to tilt it over, and that's what I'm gonna go off of. Now all I have to do is measure out the center. Now this is the inner diameter for my subwoofer. So I got my sub, it's a 10 inch, and I just got some cardboard, cut a circle out of it, and then popped it out and measured the inside. So this is the subwoofer. I measured around the outside, and then cut it out so it looks like that. And then from that side, I just went in a little bit and whatever, everyone's is different, but I chose to go in the exact depth here and then cut another circle around, which comes up with what I have here. So the inner diameter here is gonna fit perfectly. My sub will drop in here and I can just drill it into place because um, you know that's how it works. So now that I have all my measurements done, I know this fits in the car, I can cut out the circle in here, and we can go from there. And there we go, I got a hole cut out. I know it's not pretty, but it works. It fits in there really, really snug. And then once I got the subwoofer and dropped it in there, I drilled holes, which is something you definitely need to do or else you'll crack whatever you're going through and it's not gonna secure properly. So make sure you drill the holes in there. And now I just need to secure this in place and then the sub can go in. All right, just got it installed. So I put it in here and basically what I did is I drilled holes. You see I've got one here, here, down here. I've got one kind of hidden over here. I've got one right there. And basically that just keeps this whole thing solid. It, it's not gonna vibrate anywhere. All I did with that was drill a hole straight through the metal and then through the wood and then popped a, a screw in there and it's pretty much good to go. Now what I'm gonna try to do before I put in my sound deadening material is uh, 
try to close this up a little bit. I don't need it to go all the way down here. So um, I was thinking maybe I was doing this or maybe I wasn't gonna do this, but um, I've got some, a, a lot left over actually. So I'm gonna try to start putting this in and see if I can close this off and make it into a smaller box before I really fill it up with gap filler. And then last but not least, the sound deadening. All right, now I've got everything the way that I want it. I do have some gaps, but that's totally fine. That's why I have this gaps and crack filler. I'm just gonna use this to seal around any small holes that I have around the area, seal it up just a little bit better. I know it's not gonna be airtight, it's not gonna be perfect, but I'm gonna do the best I can with that. And then once that's cured, then I can move on to the next step. But while that's curing, I can also do the wiring. So I've got to, uh, wire up everything that I need in here. I've seen s some people wire it through the hole here and then continue on, but I've already wired my backup camera through here under the seats and stuff, so I'm gonna just follow this one. I'm pretty sure what I'm gonna do with my amp is put it underneath the driver's seat so it's not too far so I can use a larger gauge without spending too much. So now routing the 12 volt power, the best way that I found for the Forester is right up here behind the brake pedal. If you look up here, let me get a better angle. Right up there, right where I have that popped out, there's a little piece that goes over and covers that up and then underneath there, there's a grommet. All you have to do is pop out that grommet. It's super simple. I actually did it by mistake by just poking it. It popped right through and on the other side, the only thing I moved out of the way was my washer reservoir. I just took off the two screws over here. I, I still kept everything intact for me to get under there, but I do have the rerouted uh, fuel filter over here. You might be able to get this without, but this gives you enough room to reach down in here. I can't show you on the camera, but if you come down here and you go straight back, right under where I have my, my brake booster brace back there it is right underneath there it's a straight shot back and that's exactly how I'm gonna run it and after I got that routed up through here I got it hooked up make sure everything works I don't have the battery hooked up so I got the negative still off there now what I need to do is install the fuse so as close to the battery as possible so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mount it down here I'm just gonna chop off a piece there and um, really just splice it back so it fits into here so once it's done, I don't really have any place to mount it, so I just kind of squeezed it in between some wires so it's not gonna go anywhere if there's any sort of vibrations. Now I just need to go back on the inside of the car. And you can see under here, I've already got the little grommet in there. I'm just gonna push that up so it can pop that in place, keep it watertight, and then I need to route this underneath the bezel here. I already got it popped up. It's just some clips here on the side. You just pop it up. You can route it under here. Um, I've already got one wire routed under there for my reverse camera. And then through here, and just like that wire down there, I'm gonna route it straight down. If you want to go under the carpet, you can do that too to make it cleaner, but that's way too much work for me. Now that I've given enough time, uh, it's supposedly eight hours, but I've given it more, for all of this foam to completely cure, now I can kind of trim it down like here on the outside to make sure it's nice and flush so I can put in sound deadening. Now I got this on Amazon. I don't know how to say it, not even gonna try, but it's sound deadening material. It's only five square foot, so this is gonna be more than enough to do this whole area and on the inside to make sure this thing sounds crisp. Just finished up with the soundproofing. I did the soundproofing on the outside. I also did it on the inside um, as much as I possibly could all the way back up here in the back on this side, on this side, wherever I could just go around and got the soundproofing done. It's gonna be hidden so you never have to see it. So it doesn't have to be pretty. But I tried my best. And here is my beautiful sub that I'm putting in here, Scar Audio. I suggest you guys take a look at those guys. Those, they actually have some quality stuff. But anyway, it is a dual two ohm. That's why I have it wired like this, because I have a mono block up front under the seat. So I've got positive and positive, negative and negative hooked together because this is gonna be a single sub. I don't have any other ones. So I'm gonna do two into one ohm. So I've got it hooked up like this and the wire that I have in here, I'm gonna hook up the negative 
to this one and the positive to this one. That'll bring me to a single ohm to my monoblock that I already have it wired under the seat. All right, so I officially have it in and there you go. It's looking pretty beautiful up in here. I pre-drilled all the holes and that is something that you have to do or else you're gonna have a bad time. So make sure you pre-drill all the holes. I did that before I put the soundproofing on here and all I did was put the uh, screw in on the other side and twist it through so I could see where the hole was so when I put this on, I could figure out where they all lined up. Now something I do have to mention if you guys are going to do the exact same thing as me, which is the same sub and the same location for the same vehicle, um, I took out the back plating that was behind this in order to hold it together because you used to have the, the two screws that went up in here and the one that went in through there because this doesn't go into anything because that's all out now. That's the that right there the old sub so i took that out in order for this to sit better however because i went with a 10 that's what it's looking like now you can secure it down there's two screws down here and the rest of the pins kind of make this thing snug in place but if you're really pushing a whole lot this thing's going to fall off so i think the next thing i'm going to do is cut this carpet out because i am i mean it's hidden it looks stock but what I'm gonna try to do is make another mesh like this, cut out the carpet for this, uh, mostly this bottom portion of the woofer so I can keep it looking stock and actually give my, uh, my sub a little bit of breathing room. All right guys, that's it. And I hope you guys enjoyed that. It was quite a long process of many of my days off in order to get all this stuff done. It's kind of like a multi-part series without being a series. So if you enjoyed this video, of course, stick around for more content. I usually upload every week, so come find me in the neverland of YouTube rabbit holes that you find yourself going down. Maybe you need to, maybe you don't. <laughs>